looking at uh, the way we finished the season and the way we went on to be champions again. All of that is due to every man across the board, their commitment to excellence, and in being a champion, you, know, you have to be prepared to sacrifice everything. Whenever we step on the floor, we feel that we can't be beaten. And I think we had that swagger. We have to feel good about where we will fall in terms of um, you know, the best teams in, in NBA history. When you look at your championship ring for the year 2001, even other guys with other championship rings won't be able to look on the side of their ring and see 15-1 and one on the side of it. Just going through what we went through this year, uh, the bond that we formed with one another, because all the adversity, all the struggles that we went through, we had a chance where we could cave in. Instead, we decided to pull together and, uh, and come out of this thing even stronger than we were. Our community that we, we created is a well-knit group. We joke around with each other, we laugh at each other, we stick up for each other. In June 2000, the Lakers conquered the NBA, powered by the fusion of the game's two brightest stars. Kobe on the move, loud throw. Together, they seemed to make the Lakers unbeatable. At 28, Shaquille O'Neal was the league's MVP. And at 21, Kobe Bryant was fast becoming the league's best all-around player. Yeah, get a look at the dynasty. This is the next one right here. It wasn't just about winning a championship. It was about creating a dynasty and creating something that, you know, other teams can't really even speak about. I, I can retire now and quit now. Hey, you want to do it? I'll be back next year. You know, obviously, the Bulls were able to do it in the 90s and the Lakers in the 80s and the uh, Celtics in the 60s, but it's a new time and it's a new millennium, and we wanted to be the basketball team and the basketball organization uh, to kind of start the NBA legacies over. But after the celebration, the Lakers would learn that being a champion demands more from a team than just winning a championship. The 2001 Lakers arrived at training camp as a changed team. The roster had a new look. Horace Grant supplanted Laker veteran A.C. Green at power forward. And in a move considered risky for team chemistry, the erratic Isaiah Ryder was signed to replace Glenn Rice, the team's third leading scorer during 2000. One of the Lakers' inspirational leaders, Derek Fisher, was lost to injury. But the most important change was the loss of harmony between Shaq and Kobe, who came to training camp with the same goal, but opposite visions of how to achieve it. Shaq had kind of told her, you know, really take it easy. This has been a long season. You've put a lot of energy in. you put a lot of minutes on the floor. Your body needs to really heal. And, you know, don't worry about working out. Come back in September and start getting ready for the year. And he did. He came back about September 28th and started getting ready for the year instead of September 1st. In Shaq's defense, it was the first time he was champion, and it was the first time he was able to relax for once in his career and enjoy a basketball moment. While the battle-weary veteran used the off-season to recharge, his youthful teammate was working to fulfill his lofty personal goals. Kobe never took one breath literally from the championship till the beginning of October, end of September. He'd been moving his game up. He wanted to come out and annihilate everybody. His goals were set much higher than one championship, much higher than the level of play he, he played at the year before. When the season started, it was clear that Kobe would no longer be satisfied to be known as a supreme talent. He wouldn't rest until he was known as the best player in the league. What a steal by Kobe. He says, you're not going to stop me. You can't even contain me. That is where you do the comparisons with Jordan. Kobe Bryant, no one in the league playing better. But Kobe's personal ascent seemed to leave his teammates flat. The delicate chemistry achieved during the Lakers championship run was lost. And no one took the change to heart more than Shaquille O'Neal. I think Shaq struggled with the fact that uh, Kobe came back so determined and so hungry to show that he had grown as an individual player. Kobe was just, you know, just trying to do too much. And, you know, when you're that good, 
you can do too much, but when you play on the team, it shouldn't have to be that hard. The team's problems came to a head when Kobe exploded for 51 points at Golden State, but failed to produce a win. Kobe has become a one-man arsenal. He was trying to, to help us win so desperately, and he gotten so many points. He played such a brilliant game and carried it just the one step or two too far. They knock it loose. They take it away from him. Turnover. You know, he shot a couple of air balls down the stretch. Throw it into Shaq. Back to Kobe. The three on the way. He And it kind of exacerbated the situation we were in. That you know he was trying to win it all by himself a lot of nights. People wanted me to just kind of level off my play and not improve and just do the same thing I did last year. And I'm not going to do that. You know I work too hard and I improve as a basketball player every day. And I want to show that I improve. I've never been the one to get into whose team it is, who's this and who's that. But when it was when everything went through me. The outcome was good. It was 67 to 15, playing with enthusiasm. The city was jumping up and down. We had a parade and everything. And now we're 23 and 11. So you figure it out. Clearly, if the big dog ain't me, then the house won't get guarded. Period. The Lakers fell to fifth in the West, losing to teams they should have been dominating. They were swept by the lottery-bound Sonics and suffered a humbling January rout at the hands of the Clippers. Of all the years I've done Laker games, I don't remember one that was any more embarrassing than this one. The tension between the two superstars was destroying the fabric of the team. The things going on, I guess, with Kobe and Shaq were well documented, but there was too much focus put on that. And I think, you know, for a lot of us as members of the team, you know, we kind of stepped back and, and also started paying attention to that a lot instead of really being held accountable for what we could do to help the team. What had begun as a championship saga had become the league's leading soap opera. Such a shame, you know, the two great players can't get along. We were just a disjointed team, looking for answers, searching for the type of chemistry that we knew was needed to win. The season and the franchise itself were at a crossroads. It was just like, well, either we're going to figure it out, come out on top, or we're just going to hit rock bottom. You know, it was just either way. And there's nothing anybody could say or do to try to stop that from happening. It was going to be our decision whether we're going to pull through this adversity or it's going to crush us. The Lakers were out of answers and running low on hope. After 60 games, the return of Derek Fisher restored a sense of order on the court. But it was something unexpected that made the Lakers rediscover their sense of purpose. In late March, an injury forced Kobe out of the lineup. During his nine-game absence, the Lakers found themselves playing as a team, and they were winning. No one noticed more than Kobe. During the period of time that Kobe set out, we had to change our style back to where our Shaq had the dominant space on the floor. And once we got to that, we executed very well. And I think that when Kobe came back, it was really his impression that I'm going to come back and I'm going to make this transition into this team. Here's Kobe with the ball. Kobe in the he made, I think, a conscious decision to trust his teammates more, to be a playmaker. Bounce underneath to the baseline of Kobe. Nice pass to Grant who scores. An unselfish play by Kobe. Being a great player ain't about scoring 40 every night, dunking on somebody every night, doing this, doing that. It's not about that. It's about making everybody else better. Oh, beautiful behind the back. And shot assisted by Kobe. Once they got on the same page, just like everyone followed and everyone just jumped on and we just glued and gelled together. With Kobe back, the Lakers were reborn as the team they had been trying to become. Lakers soared upwards in the standings, storming past Sacramento to win the Pacific Division title. They won their last eight regular season games in a row. And their championship luster was back. When we started to win those games late in the season, we could just feel the momentum building. 
And the Lakers cannot play better than this. They cannot. We could feel our own team dynamic, and, and as Phil Jackson refers to it as the community of, of the team, we could feel it just growing tighter and tighter. The first team the Lakers would face in the playoffs was the Portland Trailblazers. It was a rematch of the 2000 Conference Finals when the Lakers stole Game 7 with their historic 15-point fourth quarter comeback. They were basically saying, oh, the Lakers is what we want, we're a better team. They got lucky last year, they're not going to do that this year. There was no disputing the Blazers' talent, and they quickly put the Lakers' newfound harmony to the test. Nice play. The lead in game one seesawed for three quarters, with the Lakers and Blazers both raising their game to meet the other's challenge. Now here's Wallace. Nice touch. So here come the Blazers again. The Lakers were clinging to a two-point lead entering the fourth quarter, when both teams couldn't help but flash back to their last playoff meeting. You look back to the beginning of that fourth quarter, there was a definite belief that we could return again to an effort that we had in that game seven. Shaw, his three-pointer, uh -oh. good! Uh oh A jump pass right side to Fox, he fires, good! How quickly this game has turned! As we started to make shots, you could see it again, the disbelief on their part that uh, they could beat us in a four-quarter game. to open the fourth quarter. The door opened and bang, they you know, disintegrated almost before our eyes. After game one's dramatic repeat of history, game two was a much simpler story. The tale of Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq with the rebound. Oh, what a Here is Shaq. Oh, he posterized Sabonis. Shaq, oh, Shaquille O'Neal. Agile, mobile, and starting to become hostile. The frustrated Blazers earned five technical fouls plus two ejections trying to stop Shaq. And late in the game, L.A. still had some surprises left. Look at this. Look at this. He made it. He made it. You talk about shooting free throws. I told you, you let Shaquille shoot the technicals. After game two, the Blazers were humbled. Anytime you got Shaq stepping up shooting technical shots, then you, you know it's pretty much hit over with. In game three, the Lakers were reminded of the trouble they had closing out teams in 2000. This year, there would be no such drama. Lakers on every loose ball. Here's Fox. John Hill. Oh, Hill. Three straight from Portland meant 11 straight wins overall. The Lakers team was holding together beautifully. And the Lakers have swept the Portland Trailblazers in the first round. We've grown so much since last season. And, and knowing how to put teams away, to be able to sweep a team, I think it sends a message to everybody else around the league that, uh, that we're for real. Also making it through the first round for the first time in 20 years were the Sacramento Kings, a team on the rise that believed its moment had finally come. We won the first round, let's go! Woo! Woo! Let's go! I'm telling you right now, from experience, once you get by the first round, you're on a roll. And anything happens now, anything happens, all right? Great job. In theory, anything could happen. In practice, however, the Kings still had to do something about Shaq. I'm hoping we can uh, open the tank and let some of the, the fuel out the diesel. Won't be so much fuel this series. But in games one and two, even so much as slowing down the Shaq diesel appeared hopeless. Into Shaq! Hold it doesn't matter. No human alive playing basketball can stop that man. When Shaq plays uh, to that level, he's unstoppable. The way he played at home to the tune of 40 plus points and 20 plus rebounds and destroyed the team single-handedly. And this is incredible. Well, they're playing with him now. They're, they're actually literally playing with him. Shaq is having fun. 
Meanwhile, the Lakers simply put Rick Fox on the Kings' top playoff scorer, Peja Stojakovic. It was an unsung weapon in the Lakers' playoff arsenal. Fox's defense, one of the real keys trying to stop Peja Stojakovic. Fox is everywhere right now. He's like Velcro to him. We knew if we were going to seriously defend our championship, you know, we would have to start to play the defense that was needed to, to do that. Fox is just sticking with him like glue. Blocks his shot. Nice play, Foxy. Whatever it takes with Rick uh, defensively, uh, in the Sacramento series, the job he did on Stojakovic, you know, was unbelievable. Fox not giving him many open looks, and he steals it. Rick Fox with his defensive effort continuing. And what Fox couldn't do, Shaq would take care of himself. Fox tries it again. O'Neal once again. Shaquille O'Neal with 42 points. That's just sheer strength, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing else. No one else in the league strong enough to make that play. And the Lakers, at least through two games, look unbeatable. After two games, all the Kings could do was show their respect. But heading back to Sacramento, they had hoped that games three and four could somehow be different. There's one reason why I can smile, because we will get them next time. Definitely, guaranteed. In the 2000 playoffs, the Kings took two out of two from the Lakers at home. The way L.A. handled the hostile atmosphere in 2001 showed how much the team had grown up. They're getting ball movement, but they can't make a shot, and the Lakers are off and running. Up they crack by Williams, up the boulevard, lays it in softly at the rim. Someone always seems to step up for the Lakers. Drive on Christie, the flip to Fox and put up a three. After game three, it wasn't enough to win. The Lakers needed to dominate. Well, it's kind of a, a, a ruthless way to put it, but we abs absolutely want to cut their hearts out. <laughs> absolutely. Through six playoff games, Kobe had bottled up his game for the good of the team. In game four in Sacramento, he finally exploded. They better guard Kobe. Spectacular shot by Kobe Bryant, and Shaq loves it. With Shaq in foul trouble, Kobe knew it was time to demand the ball himself. Over to Kobe, one-on-one -on -one and Christie, isolated right side, elevate, shoots, count the bucket, he's fouled. And he tells the crowd to hush here at Arco Arena. They have a good crowd up there, the crowd gets involved in the game, they like to talk trash, so I started drawing back, and started drawing with some of the players, and uh, found a groove by doing that. Lakers trying to sweep the Kings without Shaquille O'Neal. Bryant around Christie. Oh! Facial served out on Vladi Divac. Bryant with it. Angles to the baseline. Drop step spin between Whoa. two defenders. And he sends in a Massey shot. Kobe Bryant, 48 points, 16 rebounds. An amazing performance. The Lakers were chasing history and chasing away their demons. 7-0 in the playoffs. A perfect run of 15 looking less like a fantasy with every win. I think right now we have a certain swagger about ourselves because we're the defending champions and we're on a 15 game winning streak right now. So I think there's naturally more confidence, you know, to, to feel like we can pull out of any situation. The conference finals would be the Lakers' chance to erase a bitter playoff memory. In 1999, the San Antonio Spurs had humiliated the Lakers in the final games ever played at the Forum. And the San Antonio Spurs have swept aside the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference semifinals. And they did it convincingly. The Forum is shut down. I feel great because the, short, the Forum is shut down for the last time. The Spurs felt the Lakers 2000 title was tainted because Tim Duncan hadn't been healthy. And with Duncan back, they had the league's best record in 2001. If you ask me, is it bad blood? No question. They're not our favorite team, and we're not their favorite team. Well, San Antonio was a team when they won. They embarrassed us, you know, they swept up. So Kobe had that in his mind. I had that in my mind. No longer concerned with proving who was the best individual, the Lakers set out to prove they were the best team. Bad pass off the dribble from our corner. Bryant challenging Ferry. It counts, and the foul. In game one, Kobe carried the load. Kobe Bryant, oh, with a beautiful fadeaway. I don't know how you just 
defender. With every defensive adjustment the Spurs made, Kobe countered with another level of creativity. Oh, what a shot! He rolled that off those beautiful fingertips. Kobe's got this intensive, competitive drive, and uh, he doesn't back down. He always loves those challenges. Underneath Kobe. Unbelievable, impossible. Indefensible. Kobe had scored 93 points in back-to-back -back road victories. I told Kobe today he was my idol. <laughs> he's playing. No, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. He's playing phenomenal. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know what else to say. I, I think he's the best player in the league by far. Two seasons earlier, Tim Duncan was making that same claim. And in game two, he tried to make the case again. Now Duncan has it left the lane against Grant to the baseline. Gets inside and lays it in. Tim Duncan is on a mission. Oh. Spinning away. Tim Duncan rejected it with authority. And the Alamo Dome is rocking. Quarter of the drive got shut off underneath to Duncan oh. for the power jam with the right hand. The Lakers were being outplayed for the first time in the 2001 playoffs. And for the first time, they looked rattled. Phil Jackson's oh, Phil Jackson. been thrown out of the game. How about that one? And the Lakers might be losing their composure a little bit. Everything seemed to be going against us in that game. We had Phil getting ejected. San Antonio was playing on top of their game, hitting all the shots. The crowd was behind them, it was like 36,000 people. That our leader had just been exiled from the game, and we felt even more challenged to go out and to finish the Spurs off in that second game. How will the Lakers play now? This is the first adversity they've had in the series. Although they hadn't brought their best game with them, the Lakers reduced the contest to a battle of wills. With increasing determination and confidence, they hammered away at the Spurs' lead. Powers up with a hook and a rebound battle on the floor, finally grabbed by O'Neal, and he slammed it in. After Jackson's ejection, the Lakers went on a 9-2 run. The players had sensed their own peril and the lessons of a long season helped them to fight their way out of danger. A three, right down the middle. You can see the visible increased intensity of the Lakers. We definitely want to come back and show them that we're the champs and we deserve to be the champs and this is why we deserve to be the champs. Shaq comes outside to Bryant. He's open, he shoots for three. Good, okay. Kobe Bryant connecting. They have dealt. A severe and perhaps fatal blow to the Spurs championship hopes. Man! Back in Los Angeles, merely sweeping the Spurs turned out to be a modest goal compared to what the Lakers were about to accomplish in games three and four. Right across the timeline, spins around Anderson, Bobo, oh, 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 a one-handed torture, oh, brother! Reverse two-hand slam dunk. Of a kind, you absolutely have to love what you see. Kobe waits now for Fox on the drive, and now they're just raining embarrassment on the Spurs' heads. Another three ball from Derek Fisher. There's no team in Laker history ever played at a higher level of perfection than this team is doing. The Lakers won game three by 39 points, game four by 29. They had won 11 straight in the playoffs, 19 straight overall. It looked like the finals would be just a formality in the crowning of a dynasty. One more to go, man. One more to go. In the Eastern Conference, the Philadelphia 76ers had taken everybody's best shot all season long and were the last team standing in the end. Like the Lakers, they had flowered during the season as a team. And in the playoffs, league MVP Allen Iverson had captivated the basketball world. Iverson against Williams again! Yes! In winning the East, Iverson proved himself to be more than a scorer. He had become a leader and had his team believing they could become champions. Hey, yo, that's a, that's a team, man. That's a team right there, baby. Woo! <laughs> hey, ho, 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 
coach first time, man. Let's make it a coach. Let's make it a coach, man. One, two, three. Everybody, welcome to Game One, the NBA Championship Series, the year 2001. It pits the underdog, Philadelphia 76ers, against the undefeated in the playoffs, Los Angeles Lakers. This one, Dr. Jack, could be for the ages. The Los Angeles Lakers could become the first team in history to run the table in the playoffs. When you get through sweeping, what do you do? You mop. You mop it up. Just mop it up. Billy T. Stakes tonight, baby! We'll see Lakers tonight. We'll see tonight. Bring out your broom! Bring them out, baby! It's David versus Goliath, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Philadelphia 76ers. I've been waiting for this opportunity all my life. We always understand it, but we keep fighting, keep playing together. Anything can happen. Let's get serious, get focused, oh. execute. Let's get dirty. Let's get dirty. We're here. We know what we have to do. Four more games, take it one game at a time. Go out, get the job done. Get All serious, right. folks. One, two, three, let's! Early in game one, Shaq was more than even NBA Defensive Player of the Year Dikembe Mutombo could handle. O'Neal with it, back in against Dikembe. Dikembe right there taking the challenge, but O'Neal turning and slamming it with a right hand. He's into the Lakers' hands. Fox up the floor, O'Neal runs it, he's underneath for a slam. And the Lakers on a 16 to nothing run. That's unbelievable. They lead it 18 to 5. That is also unbelievable. We got no movement. We're not putting bodies on guys. We're too soft. Toughness was one thing neither team was lacking. And Allen Iverson led the Sixers back into the game. Shot clock down to three. Snow with the ball. He's going to have to do it himself. Back door to Allen. He comes out the right side. Baseline paint. Up and good. What an incredible shot by Iverson. Spinning like a top through the paint. Kobe struggled to regain his timing after 10 days off, while Philadelphia executed to perfection. And what do we have here, ladies and gentlemen? Philadelphia right back in it. Keep your game simple offensively. Got a little bit too tricky. When you throw the shack, you throw high, for example. Little things like that. Even the simplest plays became too hard for L.A. Midcourt pass to Bryant. Stolen by Iverson. Here's the alley to the lane. Scoop by and good. And the fans here in Los Angeles thinking, uh-oh, we're in for a series. In the closing seconds of the first half, only Shaq's dominance was keeping the Lakers in the game. Up off the rim. Oh, man, what a dunk by O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal with a two-hand rebound slam with under a second to go. When the third quarter started, Iverson and the Sixers were still clicking. Hey, I, you, got, you got a lob in you? Yeah, you man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get J.J. off. Sixers by six, here's the alley-oop to Jones, the catch, and the slam! Ho-ho! <laughs> Showtime here in L.A. as Jermaine Jones goes flying! Midway through the third, Iverson had 38 points, and the Sixers led by as many as 15. Picked off by Iverson, down the floor he goes against O'Neal, Allen by the big man, scoop lamp, is good! And the Lakers are being humiliated here at this point of the ballgame. This is not going the way Los Angeles and its fans planned on it going here. Yeah, after getting up and uh, getting that uh, left point lead, we just fell apart. They got four layups in the process. In a desperate move, Phil Jackson assigned the only player smaller than Iverson to guard him. Point now play. they bring in Tyron Lou to guard Iverson. Good luck. Good luck, Tyron. I'll send you a card. But the gamble worked as Tyron Lou sparked the Lakers' comeback. They wait for Iverson. Lou with a steal. Cruises for the layup. And it's all Tyrone Lou. Lou handles it. Gaining confidence by the minute. Ball in low to Shaq out to Lou. Shoot it, kid, and make a three. He did it. Oh, look what the Lakers have found. Is this Christmas morning or what? By the time five minutes were left, the Lakers had come all the way back to tie the game. Shaq, though, doesn't miss. He's got their last peg. And just slow down, take a deep breath, and understand we got five minutes to get a point up on these. Right? Five minutes. Go. Every rebound, every long rebound, every loose ball. 
With the pressure on, Kobe and Shaq seemed ready to break out. Comes around O'Neal's screen, keeps the dribble, comes the paint for the lead, tied up, back to Shaq. Lakers lead it, Shaquille O'Neal. And the Lakers' first lead gets inside the five-minute mark of the first half. But the Sixers found a way to answer every time. They're on their feet here at the Staples Center. Ten to shoot. Baseline left. Iverson. Lou knocks it away. Back on top to Snow. On the drive. Eric Snow bangs it over. And he makes the layup. Eric Snow. Where there's a will, there's a way. And now, game one on the line. 11 seconds to go. It's tied at 94. Raja Bell looking to Iverson. Six seconds to go. Bell off the dribble. He almost tripped. He goes to Matumbo. Three seconds to go. Back to Snow. He's got to shoot it. He does. It's in the air. Oh, he just missed it. He narrowly missed a three. That would have won the game. Iverson had scored only three points over the final 15 minutes. In overtime, it appeared to be only a matter of time for the Lakers. We want the tap. It's a dribble entry. Go to either rob or Rick's side, go corner, go directly into Shaq. Shaq wants it on the left block against a man with five fouls. He'll take the tumble to the paint, jump hook, yes, and Shaq puts L.A. ahead. 96-94, folks, count on that. Going on repeatedly in overtime. And here's Lou, gives it back to Bryant right away. Bryant blows toward the free throw line, down the lane, underhand, the scoop, good! And now they've got a little bit of control back. Finally, the inevitable seemed to be coming to pass for the Sixers. Just calm down, guys. All it's on them. All it's on them. They're supposed to win. We ain't even supposed Everybody to be here. Down. But as inevitable as the Lakers moving ahead was the Sixers coming back. Raja Bell around Bryant. Ori is there. He's bottled up. He's got to shoot it. Underhand left hand scoop is good. Raja Bell, are you kidding me? McKee kicks it open. Iverson. The three ball. Yes. 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 Philadelphia leads it with 119 left in overtime. Heats on the Lakers now. 101 to 99, Iverson against Tyrone Lue. Baseline right, he backs up, he fires two ball. Got it again! He's way too good! He steps around Lue and drilled it! And the Sixers have scored nine in a row! Are you kidding me? What a ball game here in game one of the NBA Finals! After 11 straight playoff wins, for the Lakers to lose like this seemed impossible. Back outside to Snow, penetrates a runner. Yes! Eric Snow hits a running 18-footer. They cannot believe what they're witnessing here tonight. The streak was over. Now, anything could happen. The final in game one, the Sixers 107, and the Los Angeles Lakers 103 as the Sixers shock the world. Coming into this game tonight, most people were talking about sweep. Lakers now are just hoping so they don't get win. swept. They can put the brooms away. That's one, That's right. We ain't do that yet. We got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. They can put the rules up, though. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. He said he played four. After one win, it might have been too soon to celebrate what they'd accomplished. But the Sixers were in the perfect mood to wish Allen Iverson a happy 26th birthday. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Game 2 of the NBA Finals. We're in a spot we never expected to be. The Los Angeles Lakers looking up after having lost Game 1 to Philly. Well, I'm serious, man. Get out there. I know you are. I know you are. Get out there. 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 The pressure is on tonight. They must win this one going into Philadelphia for the next three games. We play hard, play this game like it's our last. We can look each other in the mirror, man. Hey, Let's down. go, baby. The confidence is down. Let's keep them down. We can look Great at ourselves. opportunity. Make sure we come out and play it hard and play it right. The eerie sense of things slipping out of the Lakers' control carried over from the end of game one. The Lakers look cool from the perimeter. Here's Iverson down the middle of the lane. He shakes by Fisher. A whirling dervish. Scoop lamp. Yes, what a play by Iverson. For the Sixers, Game two was the chance to show the doubters that they were good enough to do it again. These Sixers didn't just show up tonight. Folks, they came to go up by two. Here's Iverson behind the back. Open Jermaine Jones. A three by Jermaine Jones. And the 76ers with five in a row lead by three. The Sixers have that look again, folks. 
That's all right. Let's figure something out. I'm gonna get it to you one way or another, though. The Lakers refused to panic, responding with patience and confidence in each other. Wrap around pass to O'Neal, look out again! Shaquille O'Neal with a right hand jab! Nice dish by Kobe Bryant! He drew the tumble and the key! The ball is Rengar, dribble behind the back, goes around his man, stop in the lane. Ten right now, the Lakers, one two punch, really starting to get back in sync. Let's get this one done. They finish quarters well. Okay? Watch something easy coming up here. They're going to try to get a reverse. In the final seconds of the first half, both teams battled for momentum going into the break. Into Shaw's hands, open man is Kobe, wide open on the key for the slam, good at the other end. Kobe made an outstanding finish, 49-45. Well, they'll work for the last shot, last four seconds of the half. Here's McKee, tries to sprint, Geiger's 18-footer, yes! Kisses it in, off the glass, at the buzzer to pull the Sixers to within two. In the second half, the Sixers would have to contend with a revitalized force, Shaquille O'Neal, who would dominate at both ends of the court. The Sixers need an Iverson first. Down the lane, swatted away by Shaquille O'Neal on the underhanded layup attempt. Shaq would tie an NBA Finals record with eight blocks, sparking the Lakers' offense with his defensive prowess. O'Neal with a kick out to Bryant. Look out, Kobe Bryant down the lane. Wow, what a right hand jab! And O'Neal making the pass. Suddenly, the Lakers looked like their championship selves, only better than the year before. And now we're seeing the Lakers that we saw against the Spurs, the Kings, and the Blazers. Hey guys, I don't know what the hell is going to happen in this game, but we got a series, right? We got to figure out how to play better, right? Then, just as suddenly, the Sixers started another fourth quarter charge. Allen down the lane, behind the back move, backs up, 18-footer up and good! What a sweet shot by Allen Iverson! This club keeps coming back. Hey, look! Great. We're right here. All right, we're right here. With the lead cut to three and two minutes left in the game, Kobe and Shaq got the ball where the team needed it to go. Now into Shaq. Back to the basket. Back outside and Fisher's three. There it is. Derek Fisher's three-pointer sealed game two and evened the series at one. Big ovation for the Lakers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're in for one of those June wars. Go Lakers! We're here. We're the world champions. And uh, no matter how inspired you, your team may be, uh, you know, the championship has to come through the city of Los Angeles. In Philadelphia, the fans could taste an upset coming. Sixers number one, baby! We're beating L.A. Nicholson, Cannon, no shot! We got Cosby, Will Smith, you're done, L.A. play with a lot of this, a lot of heart, and that's why we're going to win this series. First time in 18 years the fans have had a chance to cheer a finals game here. What do you think about what you see up there? It was incredible, and I, I love them today. You could not ask for more excitement than we've got in Philadelphia, the scene of our next three games of the NBA Finals. We can't expect it to happen. We can't hope it happens. We've got to go out here and make it happen. All right? Yeah. 48 strong, strong, man. Yeah. All way. One, two, three. Play on! Philadelphia hadn't hosted a playoff game since the Sixers swept the Lakers in the 1983 Finals. Both their fans and their players were ready for the return. The Sixers look like they have fresh legs tonight, folks. They look like a team that has come home and is rested. A rejuvenated Iverson gave the Sixers the early advantage. Iverson tacks, comes all the way, ships it out of Matumbo. Left baseline, a beautiful play, and Matumbo puts the Sixers ahead. But Kobe was having a homecoming of his own and showed his old neighborhood how much he'd grown. Bryant swings free, what a graceful move, and hits the layup. Oh my, what an athletic play by number eight.
seven out of seven. Oh, my. Shades of Michael. Kobe began to control the game for the Lakers, and Shaq kept the pressure on inside. Here's the diesel turn baseline. Good for Shaquille O'Neal, who gets into that crouch and sort of tiptoes back defensively. Don't sit on the lead. No. Build, build on it, baby. Be aggressive. Build. No matter what they tried, the Lakers couldn't quite put Philadelphia away. Snow bounce pass. Bell on a running layup. Great pass, Eric Snow. The competitive instincts of this Sixer team is amazing. They are still in this game. This time, the Sixers were doing the damage inside. Iverson uses Matumbo as a screen. The three ball. No rebound. Matumbo. The Lakers' strategy was shaken. In the battle of big men, Shaq found himself on the defensive, and Akembe Mutombo was frustrating him at every turn. Shaquille O'Neal just falls out of the game. The 76ers have a wonderful opportunity now, Mark. If they're ever going to win a game today on their home floor, this is the day to get with Shaq out of the game. With Shaq gone, Kobe stepped up for the team. Kobe keeps it. You know he's going for it. It's Kobe to the rim with the runner. Kobe Bryant with a clutch shot. Late in the clock, no gambling. And if you can't grab a rebound, tip it. And then be organized on the break. All right? Hey, we got a lot of time on the clock. With Shaq on the bench, the Lakers couldn't control the boards. And the Sixers found an unlikely hero to take advantage. Ollie rebounds, foul and score it. Kevin Ollie off the 76er bench, puts down the rebound and is fouled. In the waning moments of game three, the Sixers had their best chance to take control of the series. But the Lakers bench, as it had done so many times before, rose to the occasion. This time, it was Robert Ory who answered the call. Ory will take it, the three yeah. oh, Robert Ory, in the face of Philadelphia, nails the three ball from the left corner. Los Angeles Lakers go up two victories to one in this dramatic NBA Finals. He does it all the time. He's really sneaky about it. He comes in and he does it. It's not like once in a while. It's consistent. He did it last year in the Finals. He's done it for us all regular season long and he's going to keep on doing it. And then, you know, that's, that's Robert for you. <laughs> Confidence that runs 12 men deep was something the Lakers took a while to learn, but perfected once they got it. This is the most special group of guys and men that, that I've ever played with and had the privilege to play with because I can't think of one guy on our team that we don't respect, that we don't care about, that you know we wouldn't go to battle for. Everybody you know, genuinely cares about each other. It's just a brotherhood. That's all it is. You know, it's a brotherhood. Sometimes I feel that he is me. If I was a guard, that's how I would want to be. Boom, 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 boom. Sometimes I feel <laughs> That I can move if I if I could be like Cole. I wanna be, I wanna be, I wanna be if I if I could be like Cole. Be like Cole. <laughs> well, it is a pressure game for the Philadelphia 76ers. They trail again in a seven-game series, two to one. If we get this game, uh, you know, it really put their backs against the wall. And then if you can't get going. In this type of game, there's a problem, man. Let's go, hey. After spending the end of game three on the bench, Shaquille O'Neal would come out with a vengeance in game four. Forrest with a jump shot, Remy no. Rebound down to O'Neal. O'Neal going up, and he slams it home. Wow, Shaquille O'Neal with a ferocious right hand jam. Both it the other way, give to Shaq underneath, another slam dunk. With his team on their historic run, Shaq was out to stake his own claim to history. I always set my goals high, so maybe when it's all said and done, hopefully that they will say Shaquille O'Neal was the greatest Laker center ever. Unless they say he's the baddest big man in Laker history, I won't be satisfied.
Shaq put his total game on display, leading the Lakers to a 22-point second-half lead. Again, the Sixers turned to Allen Iverson to fuel another fourth quarter comeback. Here's Iverson, right wing, got it again, he knocks it down from the wing, and the Sixers coming back as Iverson makes it a 12 point game. Back to Iverson. Kobe chasing, now Iverson gets around him, he penetrates, throws it up and in. Iverson's on fire. They've got to put out that blaze. The Lakers know it now. Here's Allen on Kobe Bryant into the lane, scoop pass down the hill. He goes up and scored it. Tyrone Hill is back. A nice pass by Iverson. A 12-0-6er run. The Lakers are coming apart at the seams. We've got ourselves a ball game now. Oh, yeah. This game is far from over. Zach, don't give up this lead this time. He gave up the last one. Stay basic. And they run a hole and they go corner, lag, and this guy comes up. That's a dive man. Hit that man. Feeding off Shaq, the Lakers lashed back with an 11-0 run of their own. It'll be Shaw outside, the three ball for the right, yes! Brian Shaw knocks down a huge three. Lou for three is on the way and good. That's what I'm talking about. Ty Lou, that's what I'm talking about. Comes down the baseline on McKee, double team, kick it back, Ori's three, yes! Another three! Leading three games to one, the Lakers were feeling invincible. And the Sixers were beginning to see the inevitable, too. Yeah, he played well. A whole lot of Shaquille O'Neal. That's all it was, a whole lot of Shaquille O'Neal. Good evening, everybody. Well, of the Los Angeles Lakers win tonight, here's what it means. Back-to-back -back NBA championships. But to do it, they'll have to handle a spirited Philadelphia 76er team, and you just know that the 76ers will leave it all on the floor. I'll be on my way through LA at 4 o'clock tomorrow. Follow me. I think we're the team that we are today because of all the adversity that we've been through. Not only did we come out of it, but we came out of it a tighter group and stronger mentally and more prepared for any adversity. So, uh, in a way, I think it was a blessing in disguise for us. This basketball team has been through a lot of things this season, and we've worked very hard to maintain our togetherness and our belief in one another. And I think right now, uh, our belief in one another and our togetherness is, is, is the highest it's ever been, and our focus is uh, I think one that can't be broken. By game five, the Lakers' superiority was clear. Only the Sixers refused to admit it. And they wouldn't quit until the Lakers proved it to them one more time. Ball is on the floor. Nice play by Iverson. Freeze the ball to Snow. Under to Iverson, score. Great play by Iverson, sensational. With their uncanny ability to combine aggressiveness with composure, the Sixers did their home court proud. The bounce pass goes in low. Now they ball to McKee. Underneath the Matumbo, slam dunk. One of the prettiest passing sequences we've seen in this series. Can the Sixers keep this up all night? If they do, we're going to L.A., folks. All right, just keep, hey, just keep busting your ass. Love your effort. Come on. It's great. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. If the Sixers were brave, the Lakers would have to be ruthless. And in their pursuit of the first undefeated road playoff run in NBA history, the Lakers would show that their heart was as big as anyone's. Horace Grant overshoots, but Bryant able to come away with it. Wow, Kobe Bryant, Mark, what, what hustle. What a great play. If he gets it going, Brett, this series is over. Now Shaq moves baseline, shoots, score it. And he is fouled as O'Neal makes a power move. Sixers starting to lose their composure here as they feel their season slipping away. In turning a deficit into a 19-point lead, the Lakers would hit 12 three-pointers, finally breaking the Sixers' spirit with flawless execution. 
Lakers are up on the bench. They can all smell it now. They know all they got to do is just hang on. When we talk about championships, it's about being on a great team. All five guys have to click together. Here's Shaq. Waits to ship it back outside. They hit Lou. Corners Bryant. Wide open three. Yes, on the money. Finally, uh, after all our struggles and our adversities, we came around to that point where every man across the board, their commitment to excellence, their selflessness, their sacrifice of their individual games, to putting the team as the most important thing, to being a champion again. And in being a champion, you, know, you, you have to be prepared to sacrifice everything. No way, boys. No way are they going to stop this express here tonight. Schedule the parade in Los Angeles. When I'm done playing, I want my team to be remembered as a, a great team. No matter what you did to them, you couldn't stop them. No matter what problems you thought they had, you couldn't stop them. Fisher has to fire on three, yes! And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. It's in the refrigerator, the door is closed, the lights are out, the eggs are cooling, the jello is jiggling. In the end, these Lakers would take their place alongside the great Laker champions of the past. An honor made greater by the character of the opponent they defeated. The promise of a dynasty was being fulfilled. Back-to-back -back titles for the Los Angeles Lakers. I love you, boy. I love you. I love you. I love you. You had the best record ever in the history of the NBA playoffs. You should be proud of that. Yeah. Back to back. Oh, I think that. Oh, right, boy. Oh, you told me you were going to do it. Oh, baby. First year. Got a ring. It's spoiled, though. It's spoiled. First of all, did you forget what I said last year at the break? I'm going to give you a few seconds to go back. Kobe said, Kobe's home, we're the Bronx, and we're going to get another one next year. I told you I was going to get another one. The big guy told you so. Come on, let's go! It ain't over. Come on, let's go! It takes two to make things go right. We're going to get another one next year, again, back to back to back. Love y'all. I just want to say I love you, Brian Shaw. May I kiss you, Brian Shaw? To those who speak Spanish, les agradecemos y les decimos que el año que viene lo haremos otra vez. Привет, Украина! I love LA! When I say can you dig it, put your two hands up like that. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? To the greatest team that's ever played the 2001 Los Angeles Lakers, we say thank you, we salute you and honor you, and Let's do this again next year. That's the season for y'all. We did it again. Bach to Bach. At the parade now, chilling, hanging out, having a good time. The season is over. I'm going to holler at you guys next year in Hawaii. The training camp. Until then, 